right, this is it. This is exciting. This is how the whole thing works. You now have enough biological knowledge to understand how all the pieces of the puzzle go together to build living organisms. This is what we call the central dogma of biology, how DNA can code to make proteins which then go on to make cells and tissues and organs and how you can build a living organism. So what you probably know by now is what DNA looks like, the molecule, um, how it divides, we've covered that, but we haven't really talked about how it actually works. Well, the sequence of bases in DNA is actually a code to make proteins. And we've already talked a lot about how important proteins are to living organisms. The way I like to think about it is Lego. Okay, you know that moment, Christmas morning, you get that Lego model, uh, you get open the box, you've got the, 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 the picture on the front, maybe it's um, uh, Princess Castle, maybe it's an airport, maybe it's the Death Star, maybe it's Hogwarts, whatever it is that you want, you've got it. Okay, now it's a complex model, you can see from the picture, it's a big model, it's going to take you a lot of time to build, and if you just try to build it from the picture, you, you know, you might get close, but it's not going to be the same. What you need is you need the instruction booklet, the really important little booklet that you get, that you open, and it tells you what to do. You know, you crack open all those little nice cellophane uh, packets and you get all the little Lego bricks out, which basically are like amino acids. And the instructions tell you how to put them together. Get this block, add this block to it. Turn over the page, add another block, another block, another block, another block, another block. And once you've added enough of these blocks together, you'll make a little part of the model. Maybe you'll set that aside, and maybe you'll make, start making a different part of the model. Okay, and you work through it methodically, and then you add those little models, which are like polypeptides, uh, together. These, uh, and overall, you can make the model following this set of instructions. So basically, that's what DNA is like. DNA is the equivalent of that instruction booklet. It is a code that tells some machinery in the cell what amino acids to select uh, to put them together in the right order to then go on and make proteins. And this process um, of making proteins from the DNA code is called protein synthesis. So how does it work? Well, every three bases on the DNA code um, uh, equates to one amino acid. This is the code for one amino acid. We call this the triplet code. Okay, and there are actually 64 combinations of bases because remember we've got four bases, A's, T's, C's and G's. So it's a four to the power three because we, we read three at a time. Um, and we only need tw uh, 20 amino acids. So actually there's a lot more combinations than there are amino acids, but this is quite a good thing. Uh, for example, TGA, TGG, TGT and TGC all code for the amino acid threonine. This isn't a problem, as I said, because it actually protects the organism a little bit, because if you get a bit of a mutation, a bit of a change in the DNA, it doesn't always lead to a new amino acid. So, and this is what we call the degenerate code. And most of your DNA actually doesn't even code for proteins, um, but it actually regulates when other genes are read uh, and when to make various proteins. So the exciting thing about, one of the exciting things about the triplet code is that it works the same in all living organisms with a couple of exceptions. It's therefore what we call the universal code. This means that uh, scientists can take advantage of this and actually take bits of code and swap it around. Imagine again going back to the Lego model idea that you rip out a couple of instruction pages from one model and slip it into another one and suddenly you've got an airport with a sort of uh, you know a laser cannon on it that you've stolen from another model. So we can swap bits of code around to, um, to edit. Um, um, organisms, which is quite exciting. That's explained a lot more later on in the course. So as I mentioned, there are a couple of exceptions to the genetic code being uh, universal. The majority of these exceptions are found in the DNA inside the mitochondria, what we call mitochondrial DNA, which actually codes uh, for slightly different amino acids than the same code would do in the nuclear DNA. There's a few examples in this table here. So we know what the genetic code is. Okay, the sequence of bases, red and threes, uh, that can code for a protein. But what exactly is a gene? Well, you probably know this definition. A gene is a section of DNA that codes for a particular protein. It's not bad, it's not a bad definition at all. But now with the amount of biology we know and understand, 
we can go into this in more detail and realize that actually we can make a better, def better definition than that because it's not strictly true in, in, in quite a lot of ways. For example, what about proteins with quaternary structure like this one, hemoglobin? So is hemoglobin coded for by one gene? Well, it's not, no. So actually, one gene doesn't code to make one protein. Actually, a better definition would be that a gene is a section of DNA that codes to make a particular polypeptide. However, actually, genes don't always code to make polypeptides. Sometimes, certain genes can code to make um, functional or structural uh, RNA molecules. So we need to adapt our definition again, that a gene is a section of DNA that codes for a particular polypeptide, or in some cases, an RNA molecule. Another problem with this definition is that the idea that it is one discrete section of DNA that makes up the actual gene, but it's more complicated than that. A better definition of a gene structure is to say um, an ordered sequence of nucleotides located at a particular locus on a particular chromosome. Now we're getting more detailed, but actually when you look at it, they're not always at one specific locus. So even that isn't that uh, a perfect definition. Um, uh, they're actually interrupted by non-coding sequences called introns. So if you look at a, uh, a gene, usually you've got a promoter at the beginning, you'll then have some, some introns and some exons. The exons are the bit that actually um, code um, for the, the polypeptide or the RNA. What actually has to happen is the, the introns need to be spliced out, they need to be taken away, and so just the, the exons are used when the, the gene is read. So, a much better but not a perfect definition of a gene is this. A gene is usually an ordered sequence of nucleotides located at a particular locus or loci on a particular chromosome which codes for a particular polypeptide or in certain cases a functional or structural RNA molecule. Or you could just say that a gene is a unit of inheritance. That's much easier, isn't it?